Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss trad style, what it is, how it evolved, and how it's different from prep style or ivy style. Trad is an adaptation of the Northeastern American style, which is not as popular as prep or ivy style. Arguably, trad is the most classic and refined version of this Northern American style. It's in fact a somewhat contemporary take on the fashions of the Roaring Twenties. In its core, similar to Ivy style, Tread was born as a form of rebellion against the fathers and the parents and their style. It was a way for students to develop their own identity using clothes that were somewhat related to what their fathers would have deemed appropriate, but at the same time adding their own touch and note to it. Trad was a way for young men to distinguish themselves from polo and boat shoes wearing young men, as well as very stodgy old sack suit wearers. So what exactly is the difference between prep, ivy, and trad style? Think about it this way. Prep is the most casual style, ivy is a notch up, and trad is even less casual and more formal than ivy style. Some would also argue that trad is a more sensible approach to classic clothing that is a little more unique and interesting. The entire purpose of trad is to maintain the conservative approach to clothing while adding a personal note without going overboard and looking like you're wearing a costume. For those attending Ivy League schools, that would often meant a blazer that was very traditional, sometimes with a crest embroidered on the chest pocket, maybe paired with a rep tie and a regular button-down cotton shirt in white. For more casual events, an Ivy style proponent would probably wear a school sweater, a trad person would maybe wear a v-neck sweater with a sport coat on top of it. In the 60s and 70s, a piece that was rather popular was a turtleneck sweater. Ironically, it is popular once again in the Instagram world, and so if you look around, you can see a lot of men wearing turtleneck sweaters combined with suit jackets or sport coats. For a casual event today, a trad would maybe wear a sweater or a sweater breast, maybe with a bow tie and a tweed sport coat. Whenever you see the bright colors of Polo Ralph Lauren or maybe even J. Crew, think of trad as more muted and less flashy. Often students weren't allowed to attend functions or school in the more vibrant, preppy or ivy style clothes, so trad allowed them to express themselves while still adhering to traditional dress codes. So how would you dress in a trad style way? Well, first of all, think of it as using a very traditional approach with a bit of nonchalance. You can also check out our video on sprezzatura, and while that's over the top in most cases, it goes in the right direction. You just add more casual elements that would traditionally not work with your outfits. For example, that means you invest in a blue navy blazer or two in several three-piece or two-piece suits, as well as cardigans and sweater vests. However, instead of going with plain, solid, worsted colors, you would mix it up and wear maybe a herringbone suit in brown, just like the one I'm wearing here right now, or maybe a houndstooth flannel suit, or you would go with a faint window pane on your navy suit instead of going plain solid. So to mix it up, you would skip the matching vest with your suit and instead opt for maybe a burgundy flannel vest or a doeskin vest or a moleskin vest, or you could go with a blue tweed vest such as I'm wearing it here right now. In terms of neckwear, you'd still wear neckties and bow ties. However, you'd maybe go with slightly different knots, not just the four in hand, but maybe the oriental knot, the Victoria knot or the Calvin knot. And to learn more about how you can tie those, please check out our video guides here. In terms of tie fabrics, matter silk ties were very popular and so were rep stripe ties. However, a little bit more texture, such as with knit ties or maybe a Bourette silk ties, such as the one I'm wearing here right now, were quite on point because they were different than what their fathers wore. The goal is to always express yourself in a sophisticated way that is different enough to break with the monotony of classic suits, all the while not allowing people to pinpoint how your outfit is different. So for shoes, that could mean adding suede shoes to otherwise conservative suits, or maybe adding a colorful pair of shoelaces to an otherwise rather stiff outfit. 
To learn more about shoes, shoelace colors, and how you combine them, please check out this video here. When it comes to suits, with trad style, you wear them predominantly, maybe 60, 70% of the time, with the rest being navy blazers and combinations. With Ivy style, it's about 50-50. 50% suits, 50% blazers and combinations, and a prep style follower will hardly ever wear suits and mostly wear a blazer or more casual options. While preps would often roll up their pant hems, that's not something you would see with a trad enthusiast, simply because they weren't too keen on showing their bare skin. While preps love their boat shoes, Ivy style people would prefer penny loafers and a trad enthusiast will always opt for the penny loafers and never for the boat shoe. Unless, of course, you're actually on a boat where they serve its purpose. If you're into Ivy style and you wear a seersucker suit, you could combine them with white buckskin shoes for trad that is too loud and over the top. Instead, you'd maybe wear a pair of suede shoes. Likewise, slim fit shirts are a no-no for trad. You wear traditionally full-cut dress shirts that don't show off your muscles or anything else. It's all about a natural fit and comfort and if you wear shorts during a warm summer day, you opt for the solid navy ones, not the bolder colors or any patterns on them, such as the madras pattern that maybe a prep style enthusiast would wear. Obviously, today, dress codes have relaxed a lot more, and so it's okay for dreads to wear slightly more colorful pocket squares or just things that are a little bit louder that might have not been considered 100% trad appropriate 50 years ago. For example, you could also go with a alligator belt or a lizard skin watch strap rather than a plain calf leather watch strap. I think trad is a wonderful concept because it allows people to wear suits that are not business suits and therefore they look more casual but they're still quite stylish. Of course, the world in general has become more casual and so prep style and ivy style are more popular today but if you want to mix things up and go a little bit more formal, trad might be the perfect way to do so. If you haven't already done so, please check out our guides on preppy style and ivy style, as well as all of our other guides and videos that are related to it, such as madras, maybe knit ties, or the 10 ties every man should have. Of course, all these new videos come conveniently to your inbox if you subscribe and then hit that little bell in YouTube. And in today's outfit, I'm wearing a classic two-piece suit. It is single-breasted with a notch lapel. It has three patch pockets, which make the suit a lot more casual. And of course, the fabric is much brighter. It's not just a tobacco brown, it's a medium brown with a small herringbone pattern paired with a blue tweed vest, as well as a white shirt and a burette silk tie in brown that has a houndstooth pattern. The pocket square is wool shelly in blue and it picks up the color of the tweed vest. For my socks, I opted for shadow stripe brown and blue socks from Fort Belvedere, which tie the entire outfit together. And you can find all of these accessories in our shop here. So take a look. In terms of footwear, I opted for a thick double soled English pair of Trickers boots in a nice tan color which go well with the overall feel of the suit. My dress shirt has double cuffs and I wear cufflinks from Fort Belvedere with tiger's eye and gold. I have a little pink earring with blue and gold and my watch is a very flat gold green, very thin watch with a brown lizard strap that ties it all together. <laughs> 